In the recent cleaning video, you may have noticed a small chip in the hull of my jet ski. If you use your boat or jet ski regularly, this sort of damage to the hull's gel coat is actually quite common. In fact, if you look underneath your boat or jet ski, you'll probably find something similar. The good news is it's relatively easy to repair. Often these sorts of chips and scratches happen along the keel when the vessel is beached. In the past, I've used a quick fix to try and patch these superficial chips and scuffs. It has generally worked well above the waterline, but not below. So this time, I decided to fix the gel coat properly. On inspection, the chip was a millimetre or two deep and completely through the gel coat. Although the underlying fibreglass was exposed, it was fully intact with no structural damage. Although this damage is superficial, it is still really important that it be repaired. If left, the fiberglass will absorb water and swell, causing the gel coat to blister and eventually delaminate. At this stage, it's probably worth explaining some of the terminology as it can get really confusing. I'll roll some footage while we go through it. Firstly, while many boat and jet skis have fiberglass hulls, not all do. These days, some boat and jet ski hulls are made with composite materials that cannot be repaired using the traditional method I explain here. So check with your manufacturer if unsure. Next, gel coat is the hard waterproof external layer covering the fiberglass. It is sometimes called top coat. When new, it is smooth and glossy. Gel coat is formed by mixing liquid resin with a catalyst that causes it to harden. We call this hardening curing. Gel coat does not harden at the surface if the surface is exposed to air. This isn't a problem at the factory when the hull is being formed inside a mold with fiberglass layered directly on top. But when repairing gel coat from the exterior, it does complicate things as the surface remains soft and tacky. To avoid this, they came up with a modified form of gel coat that is not affected by air exposure and called it flow coat. Flow coat is gel coat that has had a wax additive mixed in. As the flow coat cures, the wax additive floats to the surface, shielding it from air and allowing the surface to fully harden. Therefore, we will be using flow coat for this repair. Okay, so far so good. Now comes the confusing part. As I mentioned earlier, gel coat and flow coat are resins, but there are multiple types of resin. The three main hull repair resins are polyester resin, vinyl ester resin, and epoxy resin. This is relevant because some resins may adhere better than others, depending on what resin was used to construct the hull. Polyester resin is the most common form of resin used in fiberglass hulls, and this is what we will be using today. But if you're unsure, ask the manufacturer and then discuss with your local fiberglass shop. When you go to your local fiberglass shop, they will be able to supply you with a small can of liquid flow coat resin with a pigment mixed in to match the colour of your hull. They will also supply a small dropper bottle of the catalyst to harden the resin. For polyester resin, the catalyst is called methyl ethyl ketone peroxide, commonly referred to as MEKP. MEKP is a very dangerous chemical. If it gets in your eye, even a tiny drop will cause permanent blindness within seconds. So do not take any chances. Wear goggles, gloves and protective clothing. There are a few other things you need for this repair. A very small container, scoop or teaspoon to measure out the flow coat and mix in the catalyst. After trying a measuring cup, I found a kitchen measuring spoon worked best for such a small repair. A small fine paintbrush, coarse 40 grit sandpaper, wet dry finishing sandpaper in 400, 800, 1500 and 2000 grit size, a bottle of acetone along with rags or paper towel, and a jar to clean your brush and the measuring spoon with acetone. In addition, there are a few optional items. A spray bottle of water, masking tape if you want to isolate the repair area, sanding blocks, rubbing compound and polish, 
and a plastic applicator. I used an old key card. Okay, now we are just about ready to begin. If possible, do this repair undercover as it can take many hours for each layer of flow coat to fully cure. Working inside will also help minimize temperature fluctuations, which can affect curing times. If you will be working under your boat or jet ski, make sure to chock the trailer wheels and add an extra support in case the jockey wheel fails. There are four basic steps for a gel coat repair. The first step is to prepare the area. This is by far the most important step. You want to heavily sand the damaged area and surrounding gel coat with 40 grit sandpaper. You want to ensure that any loose or damaged gel coat is removed, the surface is roughened, all the margins are tapered, and the perimeter of the defect is rounded. You don't want a jagged boundary or any sharp corners. The final preparation step is to wipe the surface clean with acetone to ensure no dust or contaminants remain. Keep wiping the area until all the debris is removed and your paper towel is no longer discoloured. The surface will dry almost instantly as the acetone evaporates very quickly. Once the area is clean, if you wish to isolate the area with masking tape, you can, but I found it wasn't essential. Now we are ready for the second step, which is mixing the flow coat and catalyst. For a repair like this, you only need a very small amount of flow coat, usually less than a teaspoon. I found it was easier to scoop the flow coat out of the can rather than try and pour it into a mixing container. I used a measuring spoon and then added the catalyst directly from the dropper bottle onto the measuring spoon containing the flow coat. It is important to mix the flow coat and catalyst at the manufacturer's recommended ratio. Typically, the ratio is 50 parts polyester resin to one part MEKP catalyst. This 50 to one or 2% ratio means one teaspoon of flow coat, which is five mils, requires 0.1 of a mil of catalyst which is equivalent to two drops from the dropper bottle. Simplified, one drop of catalyst for every half teaspoon of flow coat. And once again, remember to wear eye protection and gloves. Now, once you have thoroughly mixed the flow coat and catalyst together, you can begin applying the flow coat, which is our third step. Using a small paintbrush, you want to liberally apply the flow coat onto the damaged area and up the tapered margins. If you are working on a vertical surface, try to finish with an upstroke to prevent sagging. The working time for flow coat is typically around 20 minutes, so you don't need to rush. It is now advisable to remove any masking tape so it doesn't become stuck to the repair. Clean up your brush and measuring spoon in a jar of acetone and leave the flow coat to fully cure overnight. Even though this chip was only a millimetre or two deep, I needed three layers of flow coat to completely fill the void. To ensure each layer of flow coat adheres to one another, you need to remove the wax surface layer. This is done by re-sanding and cleaning with acetone before applying the next layer. I used 400 grit wet dry sandpaper between coats. Wet dry sandpaper is waterproof, which allows you to use it with water, which acts as a lubricant. After applying with a paintbrush, you can achieve a smooth level surface by gliding a roller or plastic applicator over the area. I found a smooth plastic key card worked very well. Once the defect is completely filled and the flow coat has fully hardened, you are on to the fourth and final step. In this step, 
We want a smoother repair so it blends seamlessly with the surrounding gel coat. This is best done by using increasingly finer wet dry sandpaper. Start with 400 grit wet dry sandpaper and focus your effort on the region of the repair until everything is flush. Then move on to 800, 1500 and finally 2000 grit wet dry sandpaper. Be sure to regularly rinse the area with water as you sand. With each finer grit, you can increase the sanding area to better transition the repair with the surrounding gel coat. When the sandpaper starts to glide effortlessly, you are ready to move on to the next finer grit. This is after 1500 grit sandpaper. After sanding, if you wish to fully restore to a gloss finish, you can buff with a cutting compound or rubbing paste, and then polish. Well, you are all done, and doesn't it look great? It really was quite easy. I hope this has helped. Thanks for joining me today. Hang in there, and I'll see you next time.